Parkland Hospital, the Hesda shooting. Parkland Hospital has been advised to stand by for a severe gunshot wound. That's an unconfirmed report that the president was hit in the head. The president's wife, Jackie Kennedy, was not hurt. She walked into the hospital at her husband's stretcher side. The president of the United States is dead. The shooting of John F. Kennedy didn't just kill a president. It shattered a nation, devastated the global community, and was one of the most shocking public events of the 20th century. It happened in 1963, and yet the murder of President Kennedy remains to this day a subject of fascination. On November 22, 1963, the President and the First Lady journeyed to Dallas on a campaign trip. Accompanying the Kennedys in the motorcade through the city were Governor John Connolly and his wife Nellie. As it moved through Dealey Plaza, the presidential limousine was fired upon. Governor Connolly was wounded. President Kennedy, who was hit twice, was killed. The dramatic course of events led many to wonder whether a conspiracy was afoot. A plethora of conspiracy theories about Kennedy's assassination have proved nevertheless an enduring phenomenon. For many Americans, the murder of John F. Kennedy would remain one of the most wrenching public events of their lifetimes. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was the 35th President of the United States, serving from 1961 until his assassination in 1963 at the age of 46. Attractive and charismatic, Kennedy was one of the most popular and youngest presidents in American history. On Thursday the 21st, the President and First Lady arrived in San Antonio to deliver a dedication speech for U.S. Air Force School of Aerospace Medicine at Brooks Air Force Base. Kennedy expressed modern, liberal and sometimes idealistic views during his presidency, giving some of the most memorable and profound speeches. Secretary, Governor, Mr. Vice President, Senator, members of the Congress, members of the military, ladies and gentlemen. For more than three years, I've spoken about uh, the new frontier. This is not a partisan term, and it's not the exclusive property of Republicans or Democrats. It refers instead to this nation's place in history the fact that we do stand on the edge of a great new era, filled with both crisis and opportunity, an era to be characterized by achievement and by challenge. On Friday, November 22, 1963, Kennedy, his wife Jacqueline, and the rest of the presidential entourage 
arrived at Love Field in Dallas, Texas, aboard Air Force One after a very short flight from nearby Caswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth. The motorcade cars had been lined up in a certain order earlier that morning. The original schedule was for the President to proceed in a long motorcade from Love Field through downtown Dallas and end at the Dallas Business and Trade Mart. The original scheduled route had the motorcade continue straight onto Maine instead of turning onto Houston, but it was discovered that Elm Street provided the only direct link from Dealey Plaza to the Stemmons Freeway. Thus, the route was altered. The presidential motorcade began its route without incident, stopping twice so President Kennedy could shake hands with some Catholic nuns. Just before 12.30 p.m., President Kennedy was riding on Houston Street and slowly approached the Texas School Book Depository head-on. According to witnesses, the shooting began shortly after the limousine made the turn from Houston onto Elm Street. Most of these witnesses recalled the first shot happened after the President had started waving with his right hand. The limo driver and police motorcycles turned on their sirens and raced at full speed to Parkland Hospital, passing their intended destination of the Dallas Trademark along the way. President Kennedy was pronounced dead shortly after arrival at Parkland Memorial Hospital. Taking place during the Cold War, it was at first unclear whether the shooting might be part of a larger attack upon the US, and whether Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson, who had been riding two cars behind in the motorcade, was safe. Around the world, there was a stunned reaction. The body of President Kennedy was brought back to Washington, D.C. and placed in the East Room of the White House for 24 hours. Vice President Johnson took the oath as president on board that flight. suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know that the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best. That is all I can do. I ask for your help and God. The news shocked the nation. Men and women wept openly. People gathered in department stores to watch the television coverage, while others prayed. Traffic in some areas came to a halt as the news spread from car to car. Schools across the US dismissed their students early. 
anger against Texas and Texans was reported from some individuals. Various Cleveland Brown fans carried signs at the next Sunday's home game against the Dallas Cowboys, decrying the city of Dallas as having killed the president. The state funeral of John F. Kennedy took place in Washington, D.C. during the three days that followed his assassination. On the Sunday, his coffin was carried on a horse-drawn caisson to the U.S. Capitol to lie in state. Throughout the day and night, hundreds of thousands lined up to view the guarded casket. Representatives from over 90 countries attended the state funeral on Monday, November 25. The widow wearing a black veil and holding the hands of her two children, John Jr., who celebrated his third birthday on the day of his father's funeral, and Carolyn led the way up the steps of the cathedral. The three-year-old John Jr. stoically saluted his father's casket during live television coverage of the funeral procession. After the Requiem Mass, the late president was laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. Kennedy was the youngest man and the first Roman Catholic ever elected to the presidency of the United States. His administration lasted 1,037 days. Even though his term in office was short, it was not without incident. He unsuccessfully invaded Cuba in an attempt to overthrow Castro, started the Peace Corps program to aid developing nations and spread American ideals, supported civil rights changes, proposed federal funded programs to benefit the elderly and financially disadvantaged. Decades after his assassination in November 1963, John F. Kennedy still rides high in public opinion polls in America, and he is seen as one of the greatest presidents the United States has known. From the state of Massachusetts, John F. Kennedy! In 1960, Kennedy was nominated to run for the presidency against Richard Nixon, Eisenhower's vice president. During Kennedy's nominating speech, he set forward his ideas of a new frontier. I can assure all of you here who have reposed this confidence in me that I will be worthy of your trust. We will carry the fight to the people in the fall and we shall win. Kennedy, whose slogan had been, let's get this country moving again, had deplored unemployment the sluggish economy, the so-called missile gap, and the new communist government in Havana. A major factor in the campaign was a unique series of four televised debates between the two men. Both men showed a firm grasp of the issues, but Kennedy's poise in front of the camera, his Tony Harvard accent, and his good looks convinced many viewers that he had won the debate. In his memorable, inaugural address, he called upon Americans to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. The inauguration of the 35th president-elect commenced. I, John 
Fitzgerald Kennedy, you solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of your ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. Having used the techniques of stardom to get to the presidency, Kennedy and his aides extended these practices after his inauguration. The potential embarrassments such as the state of his health and his sexual philandering were kept out of the public eye and beneath the glittering surface, the doses of fakery and falsehood that helped shape the new president's image were abundant. His reputation may have declined among historians and political scientists, but JFK's popularity endures, perhaps because of the evidence of his frailties and humanity. He also won support and praise internationally for his campaign for peace. Ich bin ein Berliner is a quotation from a June 26, 1963 speech by Kennedy in West Berlin. Today, in the world of freedom, the proudest boast is Ich bin ein Berliner. He was underlying the support of the United States for West Germany 22 months after the Soviet-supported East Germany erected the Berlin Wall as a barrier to prevent movement between East and West. The speech is considered one of Kennedy's best and a notable moment of the Cold War. It was a great morale boost for West Berliners, who lived in an enclave deep inside East Germany and feared a possible East German occupation. On October 14, 1962, CIA U-2 spy planes took photographs in Cuba of intermediate-range ballistic missile sites under construction by the Soviets in previous months. The photos were shown to Kennedy, and a consensus was reached that the missiles were offensive in nature and thus posed an immediate nuclear threat. Kennedy decided on a naval quarantine. The US Navy would stop and inspect all Soviet ships arriving off Cuba. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, Unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. To halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment under shipment to Cuba is being initiated. This crisis had brought the world closer to nuclear war than at any point known before or since. On Friday, November 22, 1963, President Kennedy and Jacqueline Kennedy were in an open limousine riding slowly in a motorcade through downtown Dallas. At 12.30, the president was struck by two rifle bullets, one at the base of his neck and one in the head. 
The first hour after the shooting before his death was announced was a time of great confusion. Lee Harvey Oswald, a 24-year-old Dallas citizen, was accused of the slaying. Two days later, Oswald was shot to death by Jack Ruby, a local nightclub owner with connections to the criminal underworld in the basement of a Dallas police station. A presidential commission headed by the Chief Justice of the United States, Earl Warren, later found that neither the sniper nor his killer was part of any conspiracy, domestic or foreign to assassinate President Kennedy. The Warren Commission, however, was not able to convincingly explain all the particular circumstances of Kennedy's murder. In 1979, a special committee of the US House of Representatives declared that although the president had undoubtedly been slain by Oswald, acoustic analysis suggested the presence of a second gunman who had missed. But this declaration did little to squelch the theories that Oswald was part of a conspiracy involving either CIA agents angered over Kennedy's handling of the Bay of Pigs fiasco or members of organized crime seeking revenge for Attorney General Bobby Kennedy's relentless criminal investigations. This much we can stipulate. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated on November 22, 1963. Struck by two bullets, one in the head, one in the neck, while riding in an open-top limo through Dealey Plaza in Dallas. Lee Harvey Oswald was charged with killing him, and a presidential commission found that Oswald acted alone. That conclusion hasn't passed muster with the public. News polls over time reveal that 70% of Americans believe Kennedy's death was the result of a broader plot. Was Kennedy killed by CIA agents acting either out of anger over the Bay of Pigs or at the behest of Vice President Lyndon Johnson? By KGB operatives? Mobsters mad at Kennedy's brother for initiating the prosecution of organized crime rings? Kennedy's assassination, the most notorious political murder of the 20th century, remains a source of bafflement, controversy and speculation. As with the Pearl Harbor attacks before it and the September 11 attacks after it, the event left a lasting impression on many Americans and became a common topic of discussion. Where were you when you heard about Kennedy's assassination? Mm -hmm.